Excellent. I think we are live now. I can see attendees are joining, which is brilliant. Hello, everyone. Greetings from the UK. Thank you so much for joining our webinar today. My name is Tegina Weatheril, and I'm the Director of Recruitment at in uni Global University Systems UK division, overseeing international student recruitment for a number of our partner universities. And today I'm extremely excited to talk about one of our premium partner universities, the University of Gloucestershire. And I'm even more excited to talk about one of the subject areas close to my heart. I'm very much into exercising and sports. Um, so we will be covering a subject of sport and exercise at the University of Gloucestershire. And I'm joined here by Dr. Jonathan Hughes and Mr. Edward Baker, who are academic leaders uh, at the university. Hi there, hi, thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Um, Hello. I'm also Hi, um, and I'm also joined by Carla from the University of Gloucestershire, who is the regional manager of seeing the um, South Asia region, and Kasia Cooper from in uni side of things, associate director of uh, partnerships. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much Hi, for joining. Hi. Hi there. Thanks for joining. Thank you. And um, before we start, just a few housekeeping rules. You're all on mute. If you'd like to ask any questions, feel free to do so. And um, just pop them into the Q&A section and we'll take them from there. Other than that, sit back and enjoy and we hope you find this webinar useful and inspiring. Thank you. So over to you, Edward. Thanks for that introduction. Hi everyone, good afternoon to you. Um, so I'd like to take you through uh, some information about our opportunities for study uh, in the area of sport and exercise science at the University of Gloucestershire. And I thought I'd start by giving you some information on, you know, where we are, yeah, who we are, and what we're all about. So this is a photograph of one of our campuses where Jonathan and I are based. And for those of you that don't know about the University of Gloucestershire, where we are, so we're in the southwest of England. Um, about three hours uh, from London, just over two hours on the train. There's a direct train from London to Gloucester. And we are a university of approximately 10,000 students uh, spread across three campuses that are quite close to each other. And we're a very friendly, intimate, uh, quite small campus uh, where it's typical for lecturers to know you by your first name. Uh, and it has very much that intimate family feel. We've got quite a long tradition of providing education over 170 years. And we are in the top five uh, of universities in the UK for international students. We're very proud of our offering for our international student community, which sees more than 60 countries uh, represented. And we have very good provision for welcoming and supporting uh, those students who come from overseas. So our sport and exercise science teaching takes place at our Oxtalls campus from where uh, the photographs that I'll show you in the presentation today have been taken. Uh, we share this campus with um, health sciences, so nursing and um, medical science, and also the business school. Um, and it's a modern, sophisticated and well-equipped campus, which is uh, within easy walking distance of Gloucester itself. So for those of you who haven't heard of um, Gloucester before, it's a town of historical significance. It has roots dating back to the Roman times. So there's plenty of um, history to be uh, absorbed and experienced by students who travel, uh, live and study in Gloucester. Just a short walk from our teaching space. We have our sports arena, which was built in the last couple of years. And this is a purpose-built uh, multi-use venue. And uh, typically we'll see uh, lots of different things happening here on a daily basis, including televised matches for domestic sport like netball. Uh, and we have the latest all-weather pitches outdoors for when the weather is good 
And uh, for those times when the weather is not so good, we're able to move inside and have teaching and practical activities taking place in the arena. Hopefully the slides are keeping up with, uh, with my talking. We also have a fully equipped physiology lab. Uh, so within this, you'll typically see students, undergraduate and postgraduate, performing different types of tests. And that could be anything from uh, a VO2 max or a running test, cycling, looking at the effect of different temperatures on athletes, taking blood and analyzing it, that sort of thing. So fully equipped physiology lab. And some of our colleagues who um, aren't presenting today, but with whom we work on a daily basis, are very esteemed researchers in the area of physiology. It's quite a strong area in terms of research and teaching uh, at Gloucestershire. For my colleague, Jonathan and I, uh, both involved in the area of biomechanics. And again, we have a fully equipped biomechanics lab. Um, that's a photograph of it there, where we have things like force plates, uh, motion sensors, uh, high-speed cameras and that kind of thing. Um, my PhD, which I've just begun, is in the area of biomechanics within boxing. And so we have some custom designed uh, equipment to test professional athletes within that sport. Um, and Jonathan, who I'm going to hand over to later in this presentation, is supervising a number of PhDs uh, in the area of, of biomechanics and training as well. So both of us research active and very much involved with the area of biomechanics. And in additionally, we have really good facilities. So a fully equipped strength and conditioning suite, which is not available to uh, just you know, general students, the general public. It's reserved entirely for teaching, academic purposes and the training of athletes. Um, many of whom will be our own students, but also externally, uh, those partners, clubs and sports uh, with whom we work will access that facility. And obviously all the latest kind of all weather pitches outside. As you may know we get quite a lot of rain here, uh, but that, that, that doesn't stop us from being able to go outside and use the facilities. So that's a little bit about um, where we are and the facilities we've got. And I'd like to talk a little bit more now about the specific academic courses that we offer. So in terms of our undergraduate position, um, provision, we offer a number of bachelor's degrees, strength conditioning and rehabilitation, which gives the option to stay for a fourth year and turns it into a master's, a postgraduate, so an integrated master's. We offer a bachelor's degree in sport and exercise science, also in sports therapy. In terms of our postgraduate uh, master's provision, we offer the MSc in strength and conditioning. There's an MSc in sports therapy, so more the remedial therapy side, and also in the area of performance analysis, so more working with data. For the purposes of this presentation, I'm going to concentrate more on the strength and conditioning course, uh, as this is the course that John and I have developed together, and we both deliver and teach on this program. And we're very proud of it and think that it represents an excellent opportunity, uh, both for domestic and international students. So to expand a little more uh, on this course, it can be studied over one calendar year full-time or students can opt to go part-time over two years. And we've organized this course around three key themes. The first is the ability to um, assess, measure and test athletes and then organize um, physical training and recovery in the best way to prepare them for the demands of elite and professional sport. The second is a big focus on how to coach, so how to be an effective communicator, integrating the latest research in terms of coaching and communication. And the third is the ability to 
apply cutting edge principles uh, and stay ahead of um, these emerging trends within the field of sport and exercise so that our students are best prepared uh, for the world of employment within elite sport and that they become autonomous practitioners. So some of these uh, logos, uh, prospective students may recognize, possibly the, um, the one in the middle there with the, in the blue, the NSCA, National Strength and Conditioning Association, which is an American organization, possibly the, the best known. Um, we ensure that our course is uh, aligned with the competencies set out in these various qualifications, but not just this one, uh, the UK SCA, so the logo at the top, the United Kingdom Strength and Conditioning Association. All of our lecturers are fully accredited within this governing body, and our course material is mapped and aligned to their competencies. And a number of us are also trained assessors with that. Um, that certification is a much more rigorous one in terms of obtaining it. Uh, so we feel this is a real USP for us because we are making sure that uh, all of our material that we deliver is mapped to these competencies and make sure that our students have uh, the ability to work, not just in this country, but across the world where all uh, qualifications are recognized and robust. In terms of the what students will actually be doing, what they'll actually be studying uh, if they come onto our Masters in Strength and Conditioning. We keep it quite simple. We've got three core modules plus a research project that go across the year. So one is around assessment and programming for elite sport. And this is about making sure um, our students can understand how to analyze the sport, whether that be an individual event like athletics or a team sport like cricket or soccer. And in terms of the method of assessment, what students will have to do to achieve a, a grade, this has a written assignment. So we make sure that students can write in a scientific manner and that they understand fully the scientific process and can use peer reviewed literature uh, and so forth. The second module examines contemporary topics in strength and conditioning. So making sure that students can discourse on a variety uh, of contemporary trends, that they understand the latest advances in the industry and what national governing bodies, sports and athletes demand from their coaching and support team. And the method of assessment that we use for this is a presentation. Uh, we found that employers will generally set a presentation as a task for interview. So it's really important that students are comfortable standing up and talking to people about their own ideas and that they are effective communicators and they can articulate complex ideas um, in a readily accessible way. So we ensure that we test and assess that. And finally, we have skill acquisition for coaching science, which is a real growth area. And this is all about how to coach effectively, how to uh, communicate to people in an effective way. And the way that we assess this is a coaching portfolio. So our students will be required to uh, apply their skills, get their hands dirty and physically coach athletes over a period of time. And they'll be required to keep a record of that and then to be able to reflect on it critically. So I mentioned earlier, we want people to graduate from this as fully autonomous practitioners. They're ready for employment. They can go into a job and um, tackle all the different uh, parts of it. And so we make sure that we build in that ability to be reflective and kind of self-critical as well. So this is our team. It's me on the left and John's there as well. So there's four of us. Um, and I'll just briefly tell you about our backgrounds. Because I think, again, um, just the, the sum experience that we've got in our team is a really uh, beneficial aspect of the course that we offer. So I've worked in elite sport for 10 years uh, in the UK high performance system in Olympic, Paralympic and professional sport. Uh, and then when I 
left that, I worked in rehabilitation. So I ran a neuro rehab clinic for people with spinal injury and brain injury for two years uh, in a nearby town called Bristol. Um, and then I moved to Gloucester in 2020. So this is my first academic role. Uh, the bulk of my career has been as a coach, as a practitioner, working in the sports environment. Um, the lady standing next to me in the photograph, Claire, so she's our technical demonstrator. And Claire has a background as a competitive athlete, a competitive rower, and as a figure athlete. And she brings an expertise in coaching and also in sports nutrition, which she's studying. Um, and I'll let my colleague, uh, Dr. Jonathan Hughes, introduce himself. Hi, right, thanks, Ed. Um, so my background is very much coming from a traditional sports science background. Um, I undertook an undergrad and master's in general sports science and then developed that area into muscle physiology as my PhD. So taking a lot of training principles and applying it to coaching. In terms of practice as a coach, I spend a large proportion of my time working with youth athletes as a, uh, as a framework of developing the next sort of wave of talent in, into elite sport. Um, and around that, as Ed alluded to earlier, I supervise a number of PhD students with a predominant emphasis on sort of eccentric training modalities and how to utilize those effectively. Um, also, an area that links into what we deliver in the course, particularly the last module Ed talked about, is how to make coaches more effective. So we do a large number of work, myself and some other colleagues in the School of Sport internationally in how to develop coaches to become more effective um, who are no longer in formal education. So we have a number of programs where we're working across um, Europe, in Czech Republic, Spain, in the Middle East and Saudi Arabia and across in America where we're, we're talking about developing coaches. So I have a large understanding of both practice and the science. Um, Debbie, who's standing next to me, she's another academic and lectures on the master's course. She's got an extensive background in the industry of both, as both competitive athlete and as a coach and works really closely within one of the organizations Ed mentioned, the UK SCA, as a coach developer. Um, and it also works as an athlete lifestyle support for our talented scholar athletes um, at the university. So you, if, if you're enrolling on the course, you'll have an opportunity to work alongside Debbie and maybe support the talented scholar athletes um, that she works with as well. Thanks, John. Perhaps uh, might be good, actually, John, to continue and just um, give an insight yeah, no into worries. some of the placements that we offer. Um, so Ed's outlined the, the core modules of the MSC. And one of the, the key things we like to sort of foster within our athletes is an opportunity to sort of go out into elite sport or different environments and experience how to coach. So there is a placement module where students will be supported by academic staff with some of the organizations that you'll see on the slide now that are elite teams across rugby football cricket netball rowing racket sports such as badminton and tennis um, where we will sort of provide you an opportunity to go in and work as a coach a strength and conditioning coach or performance analysis or therapist within these environments across the duration of your course so from the day you arrive until the day you leave we will be sort of supporting and fostering so that what you do is the content you get delivered on a weekly basis in your lectures you get an opportunity to apply that that same week within any of the organizations that you're on placement with the placement provider will then also support you in maybe the skills that are extra curricular to the course so how to manage larger athletes groups you know people who have other facets of their life not just the academic side so there's a large support across a number of different sectors for you to experience alongside the the taught delivery 
from myself and Ed and Debbie and Claire within the course. So this is a, a key facet that you get out and experience the opportunity to coach in the real world whilst you're over here um, in elite environments. Thank you. Yeah, so one thing that perhaps um, members of the audience won't, won't know is just the sheer amount of sports uh, that are kind of organised, funded and available to be uh, working in over here. So because the, cu the country is quite small uh, and the infrastructure is quite well developed, um, pretty much every sport that you can think of has a multitude of opportunities for engagement and employment, volunteering, coaching and placement. So from the grassroots level, uh, the youth talent identification and kind of academy level, all the way up to elite professional and international level. Uh, clubs are organized, um, they have weekly training, and they are looking for uh, help with sports science support. Strength and conditioning is one arm of that, but the other disciplines that you might encounter, like soft tissue therapy, psychology, nutrition, uh, it's very much an accepted part of sport in the UK. Um, and even within the larger private schools as well. So later in the presentation, we'll give an insight into what some of our current and previous students have gone on to do once they've graduated. And what we're seeing more and more are very good opportunities within the school system where the larger schools will uh, involve coaches um, for their students all the way through the program as they prepare them for the demands of uh, their sport career. So we're pleased to say that we have some quite high profile athletes who some of whom are students and some of whom are our partners with whom we work. Um, there's a, a, a snapshot here. So in the bottom left uh, is a young gentleman called Shab, who's a student on our undergraduate strength and conditioning course, but he's also a professional boxer. Uh, he has a perfect amateur record and turned professional last year. And we support him with his strength and conditioning support. Uh, that's Gloucester County Cricket. Um, John's got a, several years of history working quite closely with them. Um, perhaps you can talk more about that. Yeah, so John, we have, pro yeah, so we have provided uh, a number of students to Gloucester County Cricket to work with their academy settings. Um, they'll go down to Bristol um, do some particular strength and conditioning and pitch side support on match days with, with the academies. And that's been a successful partnership that has led into a number of students gaining permanent employment, but also fostered the opportunity for students to use the elite cricket team um, and the academy for research purposes within their masters. So undertaking specific projects that answer the needs that the club are looking for in terms of enhancing their performance as they strive to become more and more successful across all formats from T20 cricket to multi-day cricket. Um, we currently have a research, master's research student embedded within the club who's analysing their GPS data for their fast bowling performances and trying to work out when and how to improve inform monitoring and recovery of those fast bowlers given the turnaround between you know the the vitality blast competition straight into multi-day competitions um as well so that that's been a real strength and we they they work really well with us in supporting our students when they're on placement down at, at the club in bristol thank you Yes, yeah, so top right in that picture is Kylie Grimes. She's a member of the Great Britain wheelchair rugby team who took a gold medal at the Paralympics last year. And she comes to us for strength and conditioning support. And then bottom right, that's Bristol City women's football team. So a professional soccer team uh, based about to half an hour's drive away. Uh, again, that we work closely with, mm. provide strength and conditioning support to, and also placement opportunities for undergraduate and postgraduate students, and indeed research opportunities as well. Yeah, and and it's what the women's area of soccer is a growth area in the in the UK, so they are becoming more and more professional. So we have a large input there, 
but we also support within that infrastructure of Bristol City Football Club, the men's team who, perform, who play in the EFL Championship, so one league below the Premier League. Um, we have a number of students on placement from their masters there, um, providing sports science, match day support, uh, strength and condition and performance analysis for the elite team as well. So we, we go from the men's to the women's right through to the academies, which start with under nine um, boys and girls playing elite football. So there's a, there's a large opportunity within one club there as well for both practice and research opportunities as you transition through the courses. Yes, one thing I would like um, potential prospective students to know is that if you're interested, if they're interested in, in something in particular, whether that be a particular sport or a particular area of sport and exercise science, you know, we would encourage them to uh, come to us to further uh, their knowledge in that area. So I mentioned the core modules that are taught. And John has mentioned the placement module. There is also obviously a research project, independent project. Um, and that is what it says. It's an opportunity for people to uh, pursue their own passion and interest within this area. So if you're interested in analyzing GPS data, if you're interested in returning from injury, uh, how to get an athlete to back to uh, full performance following surgery or injury, if you're interested in female sport, if you're interested in sprinting or becoming stronger, those are the types of things that we encourage students to develop both in independence and autonomy uh, and give them the time and space and tools to develop their interests and become an expert in that field. So a few uh, little rogues gallery of uh, recent alumni. Um, John, would you mind uh, explaining yeah. some of the success stories that we've had? Yeah, so we cover a wide, so this is, as Ed said, this is just a snapshot of graduates who've come through the programme here at the University of Gloucestershire and they, they, they delve into a, a wide array of sports and active researchers. So we've got students who have transitioned out of their taught programme into becoming independent academic and researchers. So we have a few working um, in the bottom right, Simon is now a PhD graduate at Loughborough University working with disabled athletes. Um, we've had students go on to do PhDs in training science across, across the world and even with us. And then we've had a large number of students sort of move towards, as Ed um, indicated, the, the school sector, both nationally and internationally. So we have a number of students who are now leading and coaching programs in independent schools in the United Kingdom and international schools in Thailand and Malaysia and Singapore, where they're working with national governing organizations in these schools to develop the pathway for elite athlete development. We've had students then work in swim sport, students move internationally working in golf, um, and even students transitioning with their training knowledge into what is predominantly termed internationally the tactical athlete. So working with um, fire brigades, police services, army, um, navy to actually enhance the physical capacity of those um, professions where they require a high level of strength and fitness to be able to carry out the duties at, at, at a basic level so and and those are the varieties alongside our um, graduates who are working with clubs such as uh, Manchester City Football Club with their academy overseas in Australia with rugby clubs and cricket clubs so we we do see students apply their sports science and strength and condition knowledge into a wide variety of industries um, and gain successful employment relatively quickly after graduation if not some of them in secure graduate uh, secure employment before they've finished the the program as well and move straight into employment from from completion of the course thank you so so Oh, do you want to go ahead, John? Go ahead, John. Okay, so we've got a little video of a student who's come to us this year um, through the program with Gus and from India. So we've made a little recording of Rahul, who's sort of going to tell you a little bit about himself and then a little bit about how he's found the course. 
Okay, you've got two little clips. So I'll play the first and then the second. Hopefully you guys will be able to hear the sound should be loud enough. I am Rahul from Mumbai. Last 17 years I've been working as a strength and conditioning specialist uh, with state and national level athletes in India. I am Rahul from Mumbai. Okay. My knowledge about strength and conditioning, the School of Sports and Exercise at the University is a leader in technical knowledge at an advanced level with strong emphasis on student understanding data analytics. Uh, MSc Sports Strength and Conditioning at UOG offered me structured and planned syllabus across important aspects of business. Also, it was good to know the close network university had with professional sports teams, especially Gloucestershire County Cricket Club. It is also positive that the staff delivering the course encourage and facilitate students to be a part of research and development projects in SNCs, which being carried out by the team and other students. So Rahul's been with us this academic year. Um, we've secured in placement work with Gloucester County Cricket. He's undertaken some final data collection points with the Cricket Club on fast bowling performance and uh, the eccentric training modalities that can help improve their performance. Rahul's also been really supportive or, or engaged with us as staff. He's come into undergraduate lectures I deliver and assisted me in practical competencies. So he's helped with the first year students on our undergrad to um, develop a bit of teaching experience for himself, but also share some knowledge with those students from his experience of working within um, cricket and other organizations in India. And he's been really, really helpful across a number of research projects with um, other students of mine where he's helped coordinate, liaise, recruit and collect data. So in the time that he's been here, he's been heavily involved across a number of different facets. And that's something we aim to do within the students that do come to us internationally as a way of helping them understand different modalities of education from the UK in previous experiences in India. So we, if, if you're choosing to come with us, there is that opportunity to sort of see the different side of education from your own experience. So not just be taught how to do SNC, but also how we operate as a staff and get involved and help us and sort of see a, a, another side of potential employment and experience as you move through the journey of a postgraduate student. No, Thanks, John. Okay, so um, in terms of summarizing why uh, you should come and study with us for an MSc in Strength and Conditioning, we've got staff with industry experience and active research profiles. So we've been working in and around the sports uh, from grassroots to international level for a number of years continuing to be active coaches right now, uh, but also conducting our own research. We've got great facilities um, and a very supportive and inclusive learning environment. Uh, and at the same time, we give the opportunity for students to have hands-on and applied learning uh, designed to foster independent coaches who are ready to go out and get their dream job. Thanks very much for your time and we would welcome any questions uh, that you have. Thanks. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, really interesting presentation and there's so much new that I'm sure we all have learned. Um, I guess uh, one of the questions that the uh, audience would like to uh, find out is what, what are the candidates that you are looking for um, in terms of their previous background, bachelor's degree, whether they uh, have to have background in a certain area or whether there is a flexibility that you exercise? So depending on which of the master's courses students come on to, it sort of can kind of vary. Um, the, the, the main stipulation is that obviously a student has an undergraduate degree um as as a prerequisite and we look for that if a student and we've had many students come to us with undergraduates 
from as wide and range of areas as physics to commerce to engineering to um, business, then what we tend to look for there is have they got a additional vocational qualifications or experience in sport? So, for example, we'll have a large number of applicants who have come from commerce who want to start up their own sports business, but they have undertaken like a level three personal trainer qualification or they have done the NSCA accreditation. So we'll tend to look at what they've also done outside of their formal education, but an undergraduate degree is a requirement. Um, I know with the sports therapy course, they generally look for people who have some form of anatomy and physiology experience um, to help uh, delve into the deeper understanding of what they're manipulating and how they're treating. Um, and with the sports performance analysis, they tend to see a lot of applicants from computer science and data analytics, um, which helps them understand how to code the different sports performances, so depending on which one can be. But we generally look for, have they got an undergraduate? And if it's not in the sports science related area, have they got transferable skills or vocational qualifications to support their application? Perfect, thank you. Um, and for those applying from um, South Asia and India specifically, just to reiterate the um, entry requirement, the academic entry requirement is 55%. But if you have scores a little bit less maybe, so your borderline case, feel free to reach out to uh, your educational agent or our advisors and we can look into your case um, individually if you're very keen to yeah. study one of those programs mentioned um, at the university. We certainly um, keen to look into your application. Um, and also in terms of the IELTS requirement is 6.5, but uh, University of Gloucestershire also accepts other um, proof of English. Um, recently, uh, Oxford International Online English Test has been approved, which is amazing because you can do it online um, and you can receive your results within 48 hours. It's also very, very affordable. Um, so again, feel free to obviously reach out to our team to look into your specific case. Um, I think we've received a few questions here. Um, yeah. The question in regards with sports therapy, if you could please tell us a little bit more. I assume it's more to do with the, with the core structure as well. Or the yeah, so, so the, the, the three master's courses we have um, run a, a core theme through all of them. There are shared modules um, across research methods, independent project placement. So very much sports forms as sports therapy and SNC share a lot of content. The sports therapy course is very much, as Ed alluded to, about immediate treatment of injuries. So pitch side assessment, pitch side diagnosis, a little bit of long term rehab as they transition to working with strength and condition specialists or if they need to go for surgery, they're referred that way. So the sports therapy course is very much a hands on immediate treatment of injuries um, with then liaising other sports professions to actually pathway into support of rehabilitation with the right training guides from SNC. Excellent, thank you. That's really, really helpful. Um, you've mentioned great links with the industry, and I think that is something very exciting for potential applicants as well, because they always plan ahead and want to know what they're going to do during their studies um, and after they've graduated. Um, so if you could maybe please elaborate a little bit more. I know you've mentioned the companies where students secure their placements or full-time employment as well. Uh, but in terms of positions they secure and also whether you know what the average salaries are, if they are paid placement or full-time jobs, just to, to so get an idea. So typically students will come out from the master's or any other courses and their first role may be, uh, we've just had one as an assistant sports scientist. So they will tend to go in and support either a head and a lead. So a head of department will manage the leads and the assistant. So they will go in generally into a system where there is somebody working above them to support them through that process. A typical 
starting salary for those roles and again using the one we've just had with a student be successful will be around about 20 to 25,000 great british pound uk sterling per year as a, as a starting salary there are roles within the education sector where people will go in as a strength and strength and conditioning coach and again depending on the school sector that can vary from sort of 18,000 to about 22,000 but generally they will add in the opportunity for those to develop teacher training qualifications alongside um, so the the additional sort of financial support goes into further education for that person if they're in that role and want to develop that so we tend to see them going into the sort of junior assistant roles and then when they're in those roles they develop the seniority moving up the up the chain within organizations or into different organizations that's brilliant and it sounds like a great return on investment as well given that university of gloucestershire already has quite affordable fees so it's around uh, 15,000 uh, pounds for international students, but also there are scholarships available. Um, mm -hmm. There is a scholarship of 50% available, which students can still apply for until the 12th of June. So the deadline is approaching very, very soon. If you are still keen to apply for a scholarship, please do so within the next few days. <laughs> and there is also 3,000 scholarship grant available, which reduces your fee significantly. And that's something that can be applied for you automatically, um, reducing your fee down to 12,000 uh, pounds, which means with the salary that Jonathan mentioned, you can certainly cover not only your tuition fees, um, but also living costs. As we know, in Gloucestershire, living cost is significantly lower comparing to cities like London, for example. Um, so uh, it's definitely a great return on investment. And with the placement that um, students can have um, during their studies, um, do you see a pattern whether they are mainly paid or does it vary um, on the placement? So the placement? The placements as they're part of the course um, are built into a module. So the, 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 the placement that is part of the course is unpaid. Um, but the requirement of hours within that time frame is not so extensive that precludes people from actually being able to do some part time work alongside it if they have the right to work. So we've seen a few, particularly in a couple of um, placements that I've had at one of the schools where students have gone in a strength and conditioning coach and one of the schools have then sort of taken people on to do like cricket coaching and basketball coaching with the school and they've sort of paid them part-time rates for that as well so depending on the organization depends if they have the finance but typically for the placement um, within the module that is a small requirement of time which is a voluntary placement rather than a financial investment from the from those placement providers so they don't expect those students to work a full-time um, placement they expect them to do maybe four to six hours a week, if that. Um, and then that gives the students opportunity to go and work alongside part time. And there are lots of part time coaching jobs. Um, we've had students go into local gyms, do some personal training if they have the required certificates to support that. So there is the opportunity to do that as well. Excellent. And I think it's a really good point uh, because international students do normally have a part time work permit, which allows them to work um, officially 20 hours per week during term yeah. time and then they extend it to full time if needed during holidays. Yeah. Um, so obviously there are ways to make some additional earnings. Uh, but the placement that you mentioned, I think it's something that helps them to enhance their CV to get yeah. onto career ladder much quicker upon graduation. We all know that the Home Office kindly uh, reinstated the graduate route, allowing students yeah. to secure uh, two years post study work visa once they have graduated. So that's something that students can obviously then um, utilize once they've graduated and go on to the full-time employment. Um, and again, uh, within the university, there is a great support with career services or finding a part-time jobs as well. You can also have a look at your CV um, and have like a 360 degree view to CV and update it if you need it um, to your obviously um, open more doors for you in terms of the um, employment. 
Um, Carla, did you On that to subject, add? sorry, Dagina. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm following up from what Jonathan was saying, that um, with the graduate visa, obviously, the placement opportunities give students a bit of a foot in the door sometimes, don't yeah. they, for them to then yes. hopefully carry on that communication with their placement provider and potentially then get, you know, maybe get a full time job afterwards. It's, it's, so. been, it's been it's been the way most of the students have actually secured full time jobs with those organisations or others is through that placement opportunity. And, you know, if they're good enough, the organisation generally goes, we want to keep you. So the, the, the change in visa situation will certainly mm. help those students secure potentially employment post-graduation. Yeah, yeah. And also we've, um, we've only just had the results of the latest international student barometer for 2021 um, and we'll be pr um, promoting those shortly. But one of the um, top scoring areas for us where we've, um, I think, come second globally out of those universities that took part was for our careers and employment support through our academic teams and also our Your Future Plan career service. So we're obviously, as you know, very well, as soon as students start, we're almost thinking already about what they're going on to after their, once they've graduated. So we're really pleased to see those results um, come through as testament um, to, you know, what our careers and academic teams do to support students. Thank you. Thank you for letting us know, Carla. That's, that's excellent news. And it's just, again, just reiterating the point of the university, obviously helping students throughout their studies, but also upon graduation to secure those um, jobs and to enhance their skills. And mm -hmm. what I really uh, liked when I visited the university is that individual approach to every single applicant. Uh, all academics know their students, you know, face-to-face uh, -face by name <laughs> and know their strengths and weaknesses, know how to support them best mm -hmm. and stay in touch even after graduation, um, which is um, always great to hear. So you're not, you're not just a number, shall I say, as normally, you know, uh, happens sometimes in, in big, big universities, um, but you, you actually know all your students um, by name, as I mentioned. Excellent. Um, I think there is a question um, specifically for sports trends and conditioning master's program. Um, again, I guess it's similar to the one we asked at the beginning. Uh, I can see there are still some attendees joining. Uh, it is sometimes it might be to do with internet issues uh, or any other challenges. So whether any specific education background or any background with experience in a similar field is enough. It's yeah, it's a bit of both, as I said. So we look for fundamentally an undergraduate degree. If it's not in sport or strength and conditioning, is there vocational experience and qualifications to support that ability to then move to a master's level of education in strength and conditioning? Um, so we've had a lot of success with that in terms of people coming across. We've had physiotherapists come into the SNC course. So obviously they don't have strength and condition background, but they have a physiotherapy background and then move into understanding training. So generally that will be dealt with in terms of looking at the application. And then I'll generally organize a Teams chat with, with the applicant to then sort of sort through what they've got, what they've experienced and how that sort of fits with the course and they understand what's needed. So if people have a specific background, that's great. If not, then we can look at what they've got and see how that fits with the course or courses um, around the university. Um, in terms, I can see another question around the turnaround time. Um, I'll be quite frank here. I think it's really quick because the applications come directly to me. So as soon as admissions let us know there's an applicant, generally within, I'd say, two to two weeks, we will arrange a chat on Teams, then the decision will be made, and then an offer letter is sent. So as soon as the information is with us, I'd say there's no more than sort of two weeks, three weeks at tops to turn around a from an application to a decision being made for that student so they can process the information quickly and get on with the processes they need to to actually get entry. That's great to know. Thank you. It's brilliant. And it's good that you build the relationship with the applicant, I guess, at the early mm. stages of their yeah. application, um, which is great. Um, have you noticed over the last two years that there is a uh, 
maybe high interest in sports and exercise programs because I think that's something that uh, people kind of got into a little bit more. I think having spoken to a, quite a few applicants over the last 18 months, um, there's definitely been a bigger interest in sports related courses. I think whether that's the success of the IPL, whether that's the success of Indian athletes at the Olympics, that people want to want to work, but also see a career in sports science support at, internet, at elite levels in India. It's definitely been a growth. And, you know, that's fantastic for us to see because what that means is students can come to the UK tap into a really excellent resource of education with us with ourselves but then return to India and actually develop the Indian infrastructure to make them even more competitive on the international market in terms of sport so I think it's been a big growth and you know what as you've asked what's the background we see a diversification of people coming from very various educational backgrounds going I would like a career in sport and I can do something that is different to, to what they perceive can be done and that's been great for us. And if I just, just ask Jonathan, my... um, oh, sorry, Kasha. Uh, no, I just wanted to add, I think um, Dr. Jonathan and Mr. Edward, you've been really, really modest about how beautiful the campus is. I, I, I visited the campus myself a couple months back. And to be honest, the, the pictures don't do its justice. There are so many facilities. <laughs> there are so many places to sort of, um, you know, I did not realize from just looking at the pictures, how much space there is and, and how impressive mm -hmm. the campuses is. And I can definitely say that, you know, for, from a sort of an, an outsider perspective as I came in and visited. So I just wanted to maybe add that um, mm -hmm. for any students that are considering at studying. There is obviously the modern campus, there is the, the more sort of historic area where, where as, as you can see on the picture here. Um, so that's really, really impressive. Thank you. I was just going to ask um, Jonathan, um, I couldn't recall what um, Rahul's background was before he came onto the course. <clears throat> so Rahul is a physiotherapist um, and he also runs his own business um, in India that does physiotherapy and strength and conditioning. Um, yeah. So yeah. he took the opportunity to come, as he says in his video, to further the understanding he already has. So when he goes back to India, he can you know, um, deliver that to his to his staff and to his client base. So he he came for a professional development opportunity. Mm, fantastic. So he's obviously got some really good links back home in yeah. India um, yeah. with his staff and yeah and, and yes. networks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's also worth um, noting as well for attendees that um, there is a huge amount of space, as, as, as Kasha has said, on the Oxstalls um, site. Um, as I think Ed mentioned, we've also got the business school there, um, School of um, Health and Social Care there. Um, so large numbers of students from um, all nationalities um, are there on campus and, and our students do mix across, across courses and across schools as well. And also I think all the school um, sports facilities, most of them are available to students on other courses as well, aren't they, um, Ed and Jonathan? So they can book yeah, out, right. you know, tennis courts, indoor football five-a-side pitches and things. Yeah, there's over 50 clubs, sports clubs run by the union and plenty of opportunities to get involved at, you know, all levels from yeah. participation to competitive for those that want to, absolutely. Great. That's brilliant. Um, yeah, the facilities were all thing and to be honest Kasha we haven't even visited all of them <laughs> because we just run out of time um, but they were, they were definitely quite inspiring lots of space and considering that Gloucestershire is only two hours from London you know um, it's amazing um, what you can you know experience and the student life that you have and the accommodation you have um, options for on campus and outside if you have private uh, accommodation preferences that's um, also available um, that's excellent. I think we've run out of questions, unless anyone else uh, would like to mention anything. 
Oh, good. Uh, can I just remind, please, to our partners and students, if you still haven't submitted yours or your student applications, you need to do so as soon as possible. We are fast reaching the deadlines and we need to allow enough time to obviously process your offers. It was mentioned, as it was mentioned, arrange the um, chat if needed with uh, academics. Um, and we want to make sure that you allow plenty of time to receive your card and to apply for your visa and arrive at um, the University of Gloucestershire on time as well. So if you haven't done so, please submit your applications at the soonest. If you have received the conditional offer letter, Please book your suitability interview with our uh, friendly compliance team. So let's um, work together on arranging that as soon as possible if not done so yet. And do submit your uh, outstanding documents again if not done so yet. If you have, reach out to us to, um, to ensure that your unconditional is being processed and we can finalize your admission process and proceed with your cast letter as well. Okay, well, if you're a student, uh, we hope to see you at the University of Gloucestershire soon in September. If you are our partner, I hope you can also come and visit us soon. Um, thank you very much once again, Jonathan and Edward. Amazing presentation, very, very detailed and uh, great, you know, um, knowledge that we all gained about these programs. And uh, we will be sharing the recording as well with all the attendees and all our partner network as well. So for those who missed out on this amazing webinar, they can watch it back. Um, and we will also be sharing the video. Uh, so you can potentially uh, cross-share it on your social media channels as well. Thank you once again to everyone and have a great day. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all Thanks for everyone. joining. Bye. Bye-bye.